All right, so this is week 11, and uh, in week 11 we continue uh, this theme of complete altruism. Uh, so complete altruism is this total giving of oneself, this total devotion to others, this total uh, self-sacrifice. Uh, it is the opposite of the first week. So when we began this course, and the first real theme uh, was this idea of radical egotism. So radical egotism, you know, everything is about me, the only thing that matters is my goals, my desires, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, it is worth noting that the complete altruist and the radical egotist could, in theory, uh, behave in the same way in terms of an outside viewer. So when you're looking on this person on the outside, um, you might think that the complete altruist and the radical egotist are the same if the complete altruist you know, is giving to others, which they would, that would just kind of be their nature, their calling, uh, or their vocation, uh, and the radical egotist may do that because they view that as beneficial to them. They may say, look, if I act like a complete saint, maybe that's what I'll go down as, I'll be known as, uh, I'll be glorified, I'll be loved, and so on and so forth. Uh, normally that wouldn't happen, but uh, it's certainly possible. So, uh, but again, complete altruism, total giving. And in last week, we looked at a form of complete giving uh, with regard to the giving tree. And we also looked at the story of Jesus and the woman with the perfume. Uh, this week, we are watching a movie. So this is a movie week. Uh, you guys chose Gran Torino. So that's a really uh, excellent movie, um, really powerful movie. And uh, it's about this guy, Walt, who is a Korean War veteran and uh, his reaction to a changing neighborhood in Detroit and uh, just the relationships that develop from there. Uh, you have to ask yourself, you know, is Walt a good man? That's one of the things that, uh, a central question, and it's a kind of a perplexing and intriguing question. There are arguments on both sides. You know, some would say, no, he's not. Some might say, you know, he was not a good man, but he became a good man. Uh, others would say, yes, he is fundamentally a good man. And uh, I look forward to seeing how that plays out uh, in the discussion board. The other um, um, item for this week is an article by a woman named Susan Wolf. And uh, Susan Wolf wrote this article called Moral Saints. Uh, really, it's an intriguing uh, conceptual argument. Um, really interesting because what she's essentially saying is that complete altruism is wrong. Uh, now, she's saying it in the sense of complete devotion to moral theories are wrong. And the ones she's looking at uh, are two of the ones that we've studied as well. So really, she's critiquing utilitarianism, and she's critiquing Kantianism. And she's saying, if you really followed these theories, if you really took them to heart, if you really did what they're asking you to do, then you're not going to be a good person. And what's really kind of intriguing about this thesis, she's saying the person who is completely devoted to morality, the person who sacrifices themselves or you know just loves to be moral, is not actually uh, a good person, at least in the sense of living a worthwhile life. They may be morally perfect, but they're not the kind of person we should aspire, we should want to become. Uh, and so that's really uh, kind of interesting because most people think, look, if I'm not a moral saint, if I'm not doing everything I'm supposed to do, there's probably some fault in me. You know, there's some kind of uh, personal shortcoming, there's some kind of um, uh, hiccup or some kind of uh, personal quirk holding me back. You know, maybe it's because I just love to uh, go run so much that I can't be as moral as I would want to be. Or, you know, it's because I love watching NCAA basketball that... You know, I can't devote myself to others in the way I should uh, ideally do so. But she's saying no, you know, absolutely not. The problem with this complete devotion to others uh, is that you don't live um, a full human life, essentially. And she breaks it down in terms of a loving saint and a rational saint. The loving saint uh, is someone who just loves to be moral, loves to devote themselves to others. That's their calling. That's what they, they, uh, they feel compelled to do. And they get great joy out of it. You know, so they go and they do what's moral and they, and they actually uh, are also happy doing it. The rational saint is someone who essentially doesn't necessarily want to do what's moral. Uh, sometimes, maybe many times, 
they don't feel like doing the right thing, but they do it because it's what they're supposed to do. So it's this total devotion to duty and this overcoming of one's desires or tendencies or, or wants. Um, so again, you know, the problem that uh, Wolf identifies is that on one hand she says, look, you know, you don't develop a worthwhile, full human life. You can't have any uh, real hobbies. You can't have any kind of um, non-moral passions. Uh, because, look, if I'm going to the baseball game because I love watching baseball, I could have used my time uh, to better others in some way. I could have been in a soup kitchen. I could have been in a homeless shelter. You know, I could have been raising money for cancer, so on and so forth. Uh, the other thing that she really critiques is she says, <laughs> you know, a moral saint, <laughs> oh, I love to sneeze. Oh, it is one of my favorite things in the world. But she's saying a moral saint essentially can't truly love another person. And the reason that is, is because you have to be ready to give up um, the person that you would love at a moment's notice. So if I love my kids, and uh, you know they have a dance recital that night that they really want me to go to, they say, "Daddy, Daddy, you know, please come. You know, this is going to be great. Um, you know, and I'm all prepared to go." But then something comes up. Um, you know, maybe uh, ten students in the class that are really struggling need my help that night, right before an exam. You know, the moral thing to do may be to go help those students, and so I've got to say to my kids, "No, nope, I'm sorry, I can't." Um, you know, there's something else that's that's more important. Or maybe it's my wife's anniversary, and we have a nice um, dinner planned, you know, but then there's this benefit that comes up, and I can really help out and raise some money for these, you know, underprivileged kids. I may have to say, nope, sorry, honey, you know, uh, I've got this other thing to do. And so what Wolf says is if you're that ready to give up these activities that uh, involve those that you supposedly love, do you really love them? Um, you know, no, somebody who really loves another person is devoted to them, is somebody who, who wants to support them, that will be there at their big moments. You know, not necessarily always doing things for the others and giving up everything else, but that also means taking time uh, and being with those that you love. And if you're not really ready to do that, willing to do that, then she questions whether you really love them, and she would say that's what you have to do if you're truly a moral saint, is being ready to give up these activities. All right, so for this week, just the kind of the rundown, uh, you've got the, the Saints article, you've got the movie, and uh, usual discussion boards, and uh, there's another, your last LE, your last Living Ethics is due by Sunday night, so congratulations, you're at the end run of that, and that Living Ethics uh, has to do with the giving tree and asking whether or not uh, a person in your life is either the tree or the boy and having a discussion with them about that.